everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, I'll be diving back into the 56 Ford Thunderbird and basically going through the fuel system with a fine tooth comb. If you missed the first video I shot on this car, I put a link to it down in the description below. This is a pretty special car because it was recently acquired from an estate sale up north and it's a one owner, 50 some odd thousand mile all original survivor. It, this is not something that you see too often nowadays and it's in phenomenal shape with the exception of a little bit of rust along the bottom of the car, you know, typical, you know, up north type stuff, but it is a really, really nice car. It was brought to the shop basically with the goal of getting it running, which we did in the last video. Definitely check it out. It was really, really cool. Now we're hopefully going to get the car running and moving under its own power. So really, really looking forward to diving into this. I'm not sure what the long-term goals are for this car. I'm not sure how long we're going to have it, but it's a super pleasure to be able to work on something like this regardless. So I'll keep you guys up to date as far as, um, you know, hopefully potential future content. Until then, there's a whole lot of work to do, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. One of the key things that I wanted to achieve over the course of filming this video was to get the original Holley four barrel carburetor refurbished, not just rebuilt, there's a big difference. To do that, I took the carburetor over to a local business, Baldwin Performance Carburetor. They're in advanced North Carolina, and they know carburetors more than anybody I've ever met. Whether it be a stock restoration or a mild street build or an all out race car, when it comes to carburetors, they're the experts and they can do pretty much anything you want. It's really quite awesome. They take rebuilding to a whole new level. And that's why I say, you know, rebuilding is a whole lot different from refurbishing. They can actually re-anodize and redo everything as if you teleported yourself back to 1956 and ordered a brand new carburetor from Ford. But it's compatible with all of the newer, you know, ethanol blended fuels. And it's just, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I recently had the carburetor on my 48 Ford Super Deluxe redone and it, it runs better than it ever has. So they are absolutely awesome. I've got their contact info down in the description box below if you're needing some carburetor experts. While they're in the midst of refurbishing the carburetor for the Thunderbird, let's tackle the rest of the fuel system. We'll go ahead and kick things off at the fuel tank. When I was removing the original fuel lines, I came to the realization that they had to have installed these fuel lines when the body was off of the frame when the car was first built, especially the rear section fuel line just because of how it's rattered over the rear end and around the frame and whatnot. There's a lot of crazy bends and it's very hard to actually access it appropriately. I ended up having to cut the original line in multiple spots just to get it out. That being said, I'm not sure again what the long-term goals of this car are gonna be whether we're gonna go into a more in-depth restoration and repair the rust or, or, or whatnot I'm not sure yet so that being said I'm pretty confident I can at least install the front portions of the factory replacement lines that I have as far as the rear line I'll be using barricade rubber fuel injection hose Compared to the standard fuel hose that you would typically use with a carbureted application, the barricade fuel hose is rated for a much higher pressure. So while it is overkill to use in this case, I like using it wherever possible just because it's a more stout rubber line. 
The differential cover is leaking, so while I'm underneath here, I'm gonna go ahead and change out this gasket. There's not a whole lot of room between the cover and the fuel tank, so I'm not really sure if you have to drop the tank to get this cover off anyway, but it's an easy enough thing to go ahead and do, so while I'm here, I'll get it taken care of. In the last video, I stuck a borescope down the filler neck and saw that the inside of the tank was super corroded. I know you guys really can't see what I see, but I wanted to pull the original sending unit out just to see how bad it was, and it's atrocious in there. This sending unit is so crusty, it's, it's actually kind of, kind of frozen in place. Yep. It, it does not move. So, anyway. I've got a brand new sending unit that came with the fuel tank kit that I ordered. It actually has one of the upgraded floats as well, so it'll be compatible with the ethanol blended fuels. So let's go ahead and get that put in. So now I have the new fuel tank and sending unit installed. I'm still waiting on some of my AN conversion fittings to show up so I can make that rear portion of the fuel lines. So in the meantime, I'm gonna turn my attention to the front and replace this factory original fuel pump. I'm honestly not sure what the condition of this fuel pump is, but I'm gonna replace it out of precaution just based on the heavy corrosion seen in the rest of the system. I don't wanna take any chance of this thing firing up and throwing some kind of gunk into this fresh carburetor that we have Baldwin building for us. Even though we've got the fuel filter right there, you know, it's, it's just not worth the risk. So anyway, while I was at my local O'Reilly Auto Parts the other day picking up some various gaskets, I was able to secure a factory replacement fuel pump. It's got the correct vacuum lines that come off top. I think one goes to the base of the carburetor. The other one goes into the interior, which I'm not sure what that does. I'm assuming it's for the wipers. But anyway, we'll make sure those lines get back where they need to get. Other than that, it's just a simple removal and reinstall.
At this point, the entire fuel system is pretty much finished up with the exception of reinstalling the carburetor. So I'm gonna keep on going through all of the service checklists that I wanted to do. The next thing is to replace a, a very leaky transmission pan gasket. Something else that's pretty cool is the fact that the transmission fluid in this car is air-cooled. It's not actually piped up to the radiator like a lot of other cars. This is the duct on the side of the transmission. You've got this little filter right here. This has not been taken apart in a very long time, if ever, just because of like a lot of the crud and stuff that's built up in there. So I wanted to go ahead and get this out, clean it up so we don't have any obstruction of airflow. There's actually fins on the torque converter that you know, spin around and generate airflow. It's actually a pretty neat setup. All right, I'm just about finished up with the basic service work that I wanted to do for the car, but one of the major things that I'm about to tackle next is all of the radiator hoses and coolant lines. I know a bunch of them are kind of dry rotted and funky looking, so before I fill this car up with coolant and run it up to operating temperature, I think it's just safe to go ahead and replace everything. I actually sourced a couple reproduction style radiator hoses with the correct FOMOCO logo, so those are going to look really nice, especially compared to that universal flexi hose they have up top there. So let's go ahead and get to it and get this thing wrapped up. I just picked up the carburetor from Baldwin and it turned out fantastic. Here's some before and after clips to show you guys just how dramatic of a transformation this carburetor restoration was. He did an amazing job. It took a while, but it was absolutely worth the wait. The thing is, if you're not familiar with these Holley 4000 series carburetors, they can be quite temperamental. They are made up of a huge amount of parts, so rebuilding one of these is a very tedious process. But Baldwin actually went through and replated everything, upgraded some stuff here and there. Of course, it's received a full gasket set. I mean, it looks unbelievable. It looks like I just 
got it straight from 1956. So let's go ahead and get the carburetor reinstalled onto the Thunderbird along with all of the myriad of vacuum lines so we can get some gas in it and fired back up. While we're waiting on the wheels to come back from powder coat, I've got all of the basic service stuff finished up for the moment. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see how well she runs. This is just awesome. It runs so good.
Everything's looking really good so far, with the exception of this little valve on top of the intake manifold here, a part of the heater system. It sprung a leak once everything got up to temperature, but that's something really easy to change out. The fact of the matter is, it runs, it runs very well, it doesn't make any weird noises or anything crazy, so I'm just stoked now to get the wheels and tires back on this thing so we can get it down and actually move it under its own power. Power. One thing on my long list of things to do to this car was replace the tires. They were severely dry rotted and mismatched. When it comes to old tires, you can't be too careful, so before I even attempt to drive this car, I wanted to get some fresh rubber on it. That being said, I wanted to do proper justice to the car and not just throw on any old set of tires. Not only that, but these wheels would have originally been color matched to the car, so I elected to have them powder coated to match the original Colonial White. I contacted Diamond Back Classic Radials because they're one of the last manufacturers of legitimate white wall tires. They offer tires for anyone's budget and their process of creating them is fascinating to say the least. On a car like this, white walls are a must. If you're building a crazy resto mod but still want a classic look, they're also well known for building custom tires for pretty much any application, including custom colors, not just white walls. In the midst of filming this video, my wife and I went to Diamondback's headquarters to pick up the tires and get a tour of their facility. It was amazing to see just how much work goes into design and production. We are installing their Auburn Deluxe Radials, which feature a pie crust edge, square tread shoulder, and a period correct tread pattern. It looks like an old school bias ply tire, but has the technology of a modern radial tire. The skeleton of this tire boasts a full radial construction with the characteristics and performance you'd expect out of today's tires. These are brand new radial molds, not a reproduction of an outdated tire designed for 40s, 50s, and early 60s vehicles. They also have all of the appropriate nomenclature on the sidewall and range in sizes between 5.60-15 and 7.50-16. If you weren't concerned with the period correct look, there's plenty of other options to choose from as well. For that, the first step in manufacturing is taking a new off-the-shelf tire and buffing off all of the lettering and designs. In other words, they remove the cosmetic portion of the tire's face to prepare the surface to accept a proprietary rubber compound and butyl liner before the next step, which is vulcanization. Through a combination of heat, pressure, and time, they're able to permanently bond the color you specified to the tire and add a substantial amount of additional material, so the tire is able to maintain its beauty for years without the risk of discoloration or deterioration. After this process, with the new tire in its raw state, so to speak, it's mounted on a hub where the color and tire is then buffed to perfection. They also shine a laser light on the tires to make sure there are no inherent defects, such as high and low spots or any blemishes. If you're looking for that classic bias ply look but prefer the modern radial, then Diamondback's Auburn Deluxe Radial is the best of both worlds. The blue product that's sprayed on the tire after the fact is a water-soluble protectant that's easily washed off once you receive it. As an extra layer of protection, Diamondback also wraps their tires in plastic and cardboard to ensure the tires arrive to you without accidental shipping damage. A huge thanks to Diamondback for showing us around! The Thunderbird's tires look incredible. The white is as vivid as can be and perfectly complements the car. Alright, let's take her out on our maiden voyage. This thing has a neutral safety switch feature, so it has to be in neutral before it'll start. It runs so good. I'll tell you guys what, this is one of the smallest feeling interiors I have ever been in. Alright, will it shift? Ah! Shifted once.
<laughs> wow, it's smooth. So far, so good. Car sounds fantastic, except for that squeak back there. I gotta investigate it. I know the rear shocks are bad. Rear spring bushings are probably bad. I may have something in the trunk that I forgot about. I'm not sure, but the car is driving straight as an arrow. It actually rides pretty good, steers great. And aside from that rear noise, I don't hear anything abnormal, which is amazing. Well, we're back after the shop. We didn't stay out too long because this car is still very original. So until I have a chance to really go through it with a fine tooth comb, I didn't want to push my luck. But as you guys saw, the car not only moves under its own power, but it actually drives. It is awesome. So I'll keep you guys up to date if there's any more content opportunities with this car. It's been a fun journey to say the least so far and I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot and if you haven't subscribed already consider doing that too and make sure that notification box is selected so you can get notified of all of the new uploads. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.